Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all that you are doing and continue to do in our lives. We exalt, we magnify you, we worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O oh Lord, that your name will be glorified. God bless you for another day. As you connect today, please can we just make justice to this as we normally do. Invite your friends, families, invite all that you can to join us for a wonderful day as we go close to the end of the week and wrap this week up. Oh, can we just share this on our walls, share it on every platform that you are part of. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Makoto Sokotubo, Rebaga Shikanama, Likata Sakataba. We are here for the kingdom. We are here for also for knowledge and salvation. Salvation is a window into the kingdom. The kingdom is bigger than just knowing Jesus Christ or being saved. A lot of us have kind of put our tents on just being saved, which is great, but we cannot maximize what God has to offer to us if we just get saved and stay as a believer. The believing stage is, is great, but it's not all that we have to offer in the kingdom of God. The kingdom is great. It's a great and vast landmass and space that we can occupy in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are going to do a better job as we coming out of this COVID even though they are telling us that cases of the COVID is spiking up in different countries and nations, Europe is trying to go back to lockdowns. I don't want to believe that the corona is still as strong as it was when it started. Um, I know that God has proven something to us. A lot of people have died, which is an unfortunate incident. We are going to have the time to have um, just something like a, a song of praise and a fellowship remember all that went through some pain in this COVID. God is going to give us direction on how to do that. Um, we are planning it. It's going to be universal. It's going to be worth it. And then I will let you know the date. We'll come here and talk about the repercussions and the pains of COVID. And we are going to help to, to heal some families that went through pain. People lost everything. Some lost not just family members, but they lost businesses also. We are going to try to bring them um, closure to that so that we'll have a new page. But I'm talking about the church as we are coming out of the COVID in the lockdown. I remember when it was the peak of the COVID, we were we were marked as non-essential. Oh, La Bogo Sakataba, non-essential. That is that's a very funny, funny word we use for the house of God. But we we kind of contributed to that. We were not really active in other spheres of influence. Uh, I told you there are seven mountains of influence uh, and they, uh, the church stayed in the religion mountain, which they did much. Very few went into the education, but we're supposed to occupy the mountain of governance, the mountain of economy. These are heavy mountains, art and culture. These are where lives are formed and shaped. We kind of backed up on that and went away, you know, and we yielded all that to the enemy. The mountain of media, security, and technology. We never did much to possess that mountain, but we are coming back. We are coming back. We are coming back because we now recognize that the central governance of the, the body of Christ, the church, is Jesus Christ. And that was what one of the things that was missing in the formation of the church for a while now, we were more celebrated in our denominational um, um, setups than uh, celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is not just Lord, but he's also King. It has said it in, in, in Acts of Apostles chapter two, that that Christ that was killed is both Lord and also his savior. So ah, all these things are coming to fusion now. So we are coming out stronger and the, the voices that you have not heard in a while, you are beginning to hear them. 
and they are becoming very, very fortified and strong. I don't want you to lose hope of what is coming, but I want you to know that it's a new era, a new day have emerged, and you are part of that end time army that God has prepared for himself. And God will use us to fulfill his, his, his purpose here on earth in this era by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. So I don't want you to lose hope or be, be confused of what is going on. Let us pray. The Bible says the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing now and we speak also not just be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we are talking about the church that is post um, uh, 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 post COVID, after COVID, the, what is the, the the voice of the church going to be like? Now is the era where we don't talk about how great we our our auditoriums are and the number of people that we have and the com commission and the connections and the ordinations and the celebrations. We talk about Jesus Christ and that's what God wants to reset in the church. Jesus is the head and the center of the church. As the church began, it began with Christ. And Jesus began to give us a, a, a word from the, the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. He said, when you pray, pray in this format, our Father who act in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That is the key. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. So, and that was the message of Jesus Christ. Yeah? But the way to the kingdom has to go through salvation. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said, As many that will believe that he died and resurrected, and also confess that he is Lord and Savior, they shall be saved. So we now ran with salvation, but because there was no fully integration of the government of God, which was the what Jesus came to establish. The Bible says, At the mention of Jesus Christ, every knee in heaven and on earth shall bow. So Jesus became the administrator of the heavenly kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. Everything must go through him. Nothing was made that was made that was not through him. We have talked about all that, but it was made more visible after the death and resurrection. He ex he, uh, uh, what he did was he exhibited his uh, position and his authority. And he gave us that authority. But we kind of stayed in one place. We stayed in saving souls and not giving them direction, not giving them the form of existence. And people come into church after they have become um, um, Christians and what next? A lot of people are supposed to be called into the marketplace, the economic mountain. The church is supposed to take it over, the mountain of education. We yield it and we gather in great congregation. We do great things. We do a lot of theatrics and uh, we do a lot of things that bring joy, but after you leave, we are not a voice in the community. Today, the voice of God is more louder than any other time in our era, in our time. That's what I'm trying to say. So God is making his name known, known again. That's why I say the word for us today is the shout of a king. And how does it come? Let's go to the Bible in the book of Galatians chapter 5. If you look at verse 1, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. There is a liberty, a place of freedom that comes from no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. And be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. Bondage of trying to think that there's a man or a woman or a place that we can get. Jesus spoke to the woman at the at the at the, the Samaritan woman by the well. <laughs> he told him to say the time is has come and the time is now that they that must worship God will not worship Him in the mountain as the woman was suggesting, nor even at the well, but they shall worship Him in truth and in spirit. He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the light." Those three things uh, that we used to depict when you have received Christ, they say light has come into you. Even in the beginning of beginnings, when the earth failed God, the Bible said light shineth in darkness uh, and darkness cannot comprehend. When God said, let there be light and there was light. So we knew all these things. And Jesus is the truth. 
in, in John 17, 17, and they asked him, what is the truth? He says, Lord, sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is the truth. We kind of knew all that, but we did not understand that all this thing has to gear towards his government. The government, the Bible says, unto us a child is born in Isaiah. Hallelujah. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Isaiah chapter 9. The government shall be upon his shoulder. We didn't know that he has to end up with government. So there must be a king. Our Lord is our legislator. Our Lord is our lawgiver. Our Lord is our king. The king of God, the kingdom of God has to be established. This is the season again. A shout of the king must be in your life. So we have to focus back on Jesus Christ. And that is the beginning and end. He is Alpha and Omega. I remember when Moses saw God and the God was speaking to him, he said, what is your name? He said, I am, have sent thee. And Moses, he did not complete it. But in Revelation chapter one, when John was taken into the heavenlies, into the throne of God in, in the island of, from the island of Patmos, and the man that introduced himself said, this is, I am Alpha and Omega. Beginning and end. So he, in, in, in the time of Moses, it was I am. But now in the time of John, he said, no, I am just, I'm beginning and end. I am all. I am beginning and end. Alpha and Omega. We have to res, res, respond to the authority of Christ that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, if ye have been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated in the right hand of the, where his seat is not anything but a throne. He's not just sitting in one corner. When you read the Bible, where Christ is seated, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says, and there was a throne. And Jesus came and opened the seat. The authority is coming from that throne of authority and power. And the throne that Jesus occupies is the highest throne. That's why at the mention of Jesus Christ, every knee in heaven and on earth shall bow. The way Jesus is seated in the right hand of God. And when you hear the right hand of God, it's not like a, a physical right hand. One day I'm going to talk about the right hand of the Father. The right hand of God is the right place that it has to be. That's what it is. Set your affection on things above, verse 2, not on things on the earth. So a, a lot of us as Christians, we kind of got saved and we focus on how many cars we can drive, or what is our big house, the titles we have, our locations, with the travel, all kinds of things. Things that are earthly. I talked about the wisdom that comes from God must be pure. It, if you look at the book of James chapter 3, from verse 15 to, to 17, he said that the wisdom that, they say wisdom that is what? Earthly, it is not of God. There is one that is sensory, that has to do with our five senses. And there's one that is devilish. All these three wisdoms is not from God. And it, in verse 17 of James chapter 3, he said the wisdom that is from God must be first pure. First, and we ignore that we try to run after the, the mystics and the uh, uh, wisdom of men. People have drawn court just for them to understand the mysticism of the supernatural, to be able to gaze stars and get into the all these things have been done, but that is not where God is. The Bible says, if you have been risen with Christ, you have received Christ and you have died and resurrected with him. Seek those things which are above where Christ is seated. Why are we seeking things that are on the ground? Seek those things which are above. You know, God, God told Adam to dominate in Genesis chapter 1, 28. Be fruitful, multiply, bring the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Man kind of that macho mindset. So when we got into salvation, we tried to operate with the old pattern of domination. Our domination does not mean that we have to build everything in our city to dominate. Jesus came never on giving a house, but he dominated all everything, both heavenly and physical, before he left. His authority was beyond this world. 
the command ceased and they stood still. Hallelujah. He called the dead from the, dead, from, from the land of the dead and they came back to the land of the living. Jesus Christ multiplied food. He multiplied fishes from a lake. And fishes that never existed in that lake came. People that were possessed with demons, when he spoke to them, their life was put back together. The woman with the issue of blood. What I'm talking about, he dominated in every ramification. That men began to come. Gentiles were coming to the rising of him. And kings were coming to the brightness of his rising. That was what he gave to us, the kingdom of God. So, but we took domination to a low level, which is earthly. Until I show you how many things I have, then I'm not, that shows that I have authority and power. That I know the governor, pastors were posing with ministers and presidents. These are people that are supposed to be carrying chair in church. The government shall be upon his shoulder. That's what the Bible says. The government of the world shall be upon the shoulder of Jesus Christ. And upon his government, there shall be no end. I don't know whether you get all this. That's why the church can be, can be, can be called a non-essential in the COVID economy that the church does not matter. It can be closed because it's non-essential. It is not important to have church. And not from in one nation, it's coast to coast, from America, even to Africa, from Europe to Asia, from Australia to New Zealand, everywhere. Churches were called non-essential and nobody came out. But let me tell you, God is still having some remnants and the remnants are coming out because a shout of the king is among you. Many of you don't know that the voice of the king of the kings and the Lord of lords has been with you even all this time. You say, Lord, I am with you always. Huh? Sometimes God is very low. God, it comes like a dove. It's as gentle as a lamb, but he, in him is a lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah has risen. It's time for us to come back. Huh? Let us go back to, to, to the things that God has called us. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. The Bible said, God said to us, arise, shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That you are going to rise does not mean that once your light come, everywhere will be illuminated. No. If you look at verse 2, the Bible says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. That means there will still be COVID, people will still be dying, but you will shine. The darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So you can be the only light in your neighborhood. You don't have to say because you have risen, let the whole city lit up once. No, because your light is very important because you are the light of the Lord. You are representing God. That's why we are called ambassadors or apostles of God. That light, when it shines, it brings people to you. Verse 3, it says, and the Gentiles... That's the key. The Gentiles shall come to thy light. So because you are a light, because we have light in different places and in different cities, the light will not be a church building. The light is in the sons of God. If the light is in the, 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 the man church. The man, when you talk about the church, we're not talking about this a place. It's a person. It's a person. And that is who God has called. When the Bible says, and Gentiles, Gentiles, unbelievers, heathens, nations, shall come to thy light. And look at the next thing there. And kings, the governors and the presidents, to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes and about, run about and see all. They gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters be nursed at thy side. God is bringing back the church to the place of authority, and you are one of them. You are one of the remnants. God is calling men. <laughs> Many of you, your voices have not been heard before, but this is a time for your voice to be amplified because the spirit of God is adding voice to your voice. Uh, God is giving voice to the voiceless. God is giving authority to people that has no power. But it's time for you to go because you say, behold, I give you authority. I give you authority not just to be the only building standing in your street, but authority to tread when you are beginning to tread upon things that are not seen scorpions and, and uh, serpents we are talking about when you're talking about serpentine spirit you are talking about um, 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 uh, a snake which is also um, a marine spirit bakoto sakataba 
the uh, 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 divination, the spirit of divination, the dragon spirit, and he says scorpions, these are witch and wizardries. You shall tread them upon. It's not something. The Bible said in Psalm 91, verse 14, he said that you shall tread upon the lions and the young lions and the others shall you trample on their feet. This is the time. Brethren, I'm telling you that you have to hold on to the salvation that you have. It's not a time to wish that things happen because you are the one that God is waiting for. For the Bible said in, in the book of Acts chapter, is it not Acts, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 19, it said for the earnest expectations of creation, the earnest expectation of creations, urgently wait for the manifestations of the sons of God. How do you manifest? The sun does not manifest by themselves. With by yourself, you can do nothing. But the light shineth in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. The what we use, the authority that we manifest with, is called what we call the, the delegated power. The delegated authority, God is going to yield His authority unto you because we are high and above with Jesus Christ, far above principalities and powers. Because this is the time. There's something about timing. This is the time. For the, for the new church to come out. The Bible says God is going to roll away the first and second heaven. Everything shall be packed up and rolled away. There is a new era that is imagined, the era of the kingdom of God where the king shall be Jesus Christ. That is the only thing that will be standing. Nations have failed. We have seen that the technology of America and the science of this world, both United Nations and World Health Organization, has failed. We are now, if you call it COVID-19, from 2019 up to 2020, past almost getting to one year, the, the vaccines all have failed. Everything has failed. We have to try God. Hallelujah. It is time to hold on to God. Oh, it's unfortunate that a lot of people passed away this season. But let me tell you, because you are alive, it's not because you are smart. It's not because you are wise, but because God has something in you. It is time to hold on to God for he is going to do it. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, the time has come. He said, while the earth remains, we are still in earth. Seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. These are natural laws. God said, while the earth remains, these are things that will always be there as long as there is earth. There is seed time and there is harvest. Those three things, are the, we, we cannot get to harvest without time. So the seed time and the harvest time, what separate them is the time in between. And there is time and season for everything. This is the season for a new era of God bringing out a voice that the voice that will be speaking will be the voice of God. As you are hearing the sound of my voice, I want you to know that God is speaking to you today to make your voice count in your nation. Don't wish that things change. Politicians will never change. They are called politicians. They are liars. So it is time for you to stand in your domain and your territory and make a declaration and decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. The voice that you are waiting for is your voice. I want to tell you when Jesus came, he gave them something in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, kind of the enumerated, the four missions of the, of the church in those days. Uh, the Bible said in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly, continued. When you hear continuous, it is something that they do it routinely, continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, that's one, and fellowship, two, and breaking of bread, three, and prayers, four. These are the things that they did throughout the whole Acts of Apostles. And if you look at that era, it was fire and fire everywhere. Nations were submitted unto them. Kings were bowing down. In fact, when Paul met Agrippa in Acts 27, Agrippa almost became a Christian from Acts 25 to 27. Even when Paul was taken, he said, no, I, I said, I don't want to be free. Take me, I appeal to Caesar. And every king and every nation they come, they conquer it. We are talking about the government of Jesus Christ because the shout of the king was in their midst. We have kind of told Jesus, don't worry, we figure this out, we know how to do it. And God has just become like a ceremony, but it is now back the era of power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, the kingdom of God is not in wars, but in power. It is not in wars, oh brother and sister, it's not in wars, it's in power. I thank God for those of you that have been faithful, connecting, and we have been hearing the undiluted word of God. I pray because God has been speaking to us daily. This food is daily bread. We have been cooking this food every day. It's not something that is being memorized or something that is crammed or written somewhere. Every day we don't know what God is going to say until we begin to speak. Then God is beginning to bring out his mind for us. I'm telling you that hold on to the voice of God that you are hearing 
hold on to the word of God that you have, hold on to your salvation because get ready, a new era has emerged. You will start to see yourself Imagine in different sphere of influence. We will take over the family altars. The family circle has been defined in many ways. In fact, nations are beginning to break it down and say they're going to bring out new curriculums for, for, the, for the, uh, what is the definition of a family. It's no more the Adam and Eve. It's Adam and Steve now, and Eve and so Evelyn, something like that. But God is bringing back a structure into the house of God. So the, the altar of family, the mountain of family, many of you are going to mount there and mount it strongly, where there will be the father and the son, the, uh, and, the son and the mother and the daughters. There must be a male and female and their children and the three will grow out from there. That's a nuclear family. And now the mountain will extend to the mountain of a, a, a religion or fellowship, which is called the church that comes out from that, that we start to have our children understand the moralities and how to live and live well in the society where they are going. They will start to teach them economy and the production and services and buying and selling, the consumer and the, and the one that produces something. This is what forms economy. They will understand how to, how to manage resources and finances. That's the mountain of economy out there. And these are three strong mountains that just, that just came out from one mountain, from the mountain of family. And from there, we have the mountain Moko to Sakataba, Rabogo Sheketeba, of religion, of fellowship. From there, we have the mountain of education, the mountain of art and culture. This is about six mountains now. And the last one is going to be the mountain of media. This is the media age, the time of digital. Everything is now liquid. Money is even in the digital form. You, a time is coming where dollars, the paper dollar will mean nothing. If you don't have a digital way of transferring or buying or selling, you might never buy or sell. I'm telling you, we are getting closer. So that's why the establishment of the kingdom of God is very vital. Now, once you know that the sons of God have to mount on all these mountains, then Jesus will come. What we are now is a restructuring. There's a reformation of the church. A new voice and a new way of doing church is coming out. Many will never go to church building anymore. But if you are connected to a place, stay there. Because God is going to bring out different ways of managing and doing his business. It's a new era. It's a new era. And they continue, in, in, continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread. Hallelujah. And prayers. Prayer is beginning to make sense again. O Kadama Sakataba. It's not a time to wish that prayer just go away. Now we hear people, politicians, everybody say we send our prayers to you. What does that mean? Our prayers are with you. What kind of prayer are they praying? Everybody is throwing out what prayer is to them. But what kind of prayer? It's a common word in America. Somebody's going through stuff and you say, send, send our wishes to them. Our prayers are with you. And maybe many people that are saying that don't even pray. They don't even remember you in their prayer. But this time, the prayer we talk about shall be real. You will hear people say, I'm praying for you. And they will pray for you for real. We pray for nations. We pray for the children of God. We pray for unbelievers to become believers. We pray for cities and towns. We pray for the dead and the living. We pray. Things are going. Prayer is the, the two things that God lives with us that is going to be constant and continuous. That will never go away. Is fellowship and communication, which is prayer. We have to fellowship like what we are doing now. That's the only way we sharpen ourselves. But the other fellowships, like going to physical place of worship or going to a brother, a brother or a sister, and you go there and talk the things of God. As you are talking to them, you are fellowshipping. Those little, little meetings and big meetings and all that is making sense now. The Bible said in the book of Micah chapter four, as they were talking, they were fellowship. These are ministers. It's not in a formal setting. The word they were saying, God said, I will do it. God began to carry what they were saying in just their casual conversation and made it to become something big. Many of you will just sit down with your friend in a restaurant or talk in somewhere. And in that conversation, great things will come out of it because this is the era of the kingdom of God. The kingdom has to go back to the king. The king is Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Psalm 110, verse 1. Look at verse 2. He said, and thy, thy rod and thy strength shall come out of Zion. Rule 
thou in the mix of my enemy. So the Zion will be the expression, which is the church, the source of God, will be the expression on how God will express his authority. As Jesus is seated in the right hand of the Father, his expression of his power and dominion and his authority shall be the rod and his strength shall come out from the church, from Zion. And who are the people in Zion? You and me, the source of God. It's time for us to take deliberate move to begin to understand. But I want us to see the book of Colossians chapter 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Look at, let's read verse 13, and maybe we'll take it down to 18 if, if the time will permit us. Oh, Karaba Sakataba. Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 13 and say, Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us? So the, the word translation is has given us a new life, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we are translated into a kingdom where there is a king. Our king is Jesus Christ, in whom we have the redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible. Christ is the image of the God that we can see, the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, I want you to see where how big his power is. By him were all things created uh, that were in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether be thrones. So there are thrones that you don't see. And what is in heaven is just thrones. It's authority. We, whether be it throne or dominions, these are spiritual heavyweights or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So Verse 17, are you there? We are reading the book of Colossians chapter one. Hallelujah. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Verse 18, and we're going to stop there. And he is the head of the body. So we are the body now. I want to see where you, where you come in. He is the head of the body, the church. So the body is the church. Who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead? That in all things he might have what? Preeminence. He might have great authority. In all things, he might have preeminence. I want you to go and read this Colossians chapter one. You will understand what we are talking about. The shout of a king. Jesus Christ is the king of the kings and lord of lords. I'm not talking about physical thrones like the king and the palace of the Buckingham Palace of the, of, of, of the British. He's much bigger than that, bigger than earth itself. I don't want to even mention nations. I'm talking about earth and the whole galaxies and all the things that are in the, in the space, to the first and second heaven, up to the third heaven. He is the king that sits there. All things were made by him. So we have to bring him back to church because if the church is his body, so we, he, he expresses himself. Look at verse 18. And he is the head of the body. So the body is the, the church. If you look at the book of Ephesians chapter five, talking about the marriage of between a husband and a wife and Jesus pivoted to the, to the marriage of the church and Jesus Christ. He said that we should love our wives as Christ loved the church and died for him because the church was his body. So now look at verse 18 of Colossians chapter one. He said, and he is the head of the body, the body, the body. We, we are the body of Christ, the church. So the church is not the building, it's not denomination. We have never heard in this Bible, any church mentioned here. We're talking about the believers, the children of God, the sons of God. That's why sons of God have to begin to stand up and take their place in this era. Who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead? The church is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead. Jesus is the beginning of the firstborn from all creation. Everything created, he's the first begotten son. That all things, he might have preeminence. I want you to think about this thing. In all things, he should have preeminence. He should have power over it, authority. If Christ is your Lord, Fukarabasi Katabah, he is your savior. That means he owns you. 
he has to do with whatever you do has to come from him. If you are under the government of Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Matthew 24, oh, before we pray, Matthew 24, look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Did you see it in your Bible? Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. God is trying to use it as a witness unto all nations. And then what shall the end come? So we are going back to the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, not of the gospel of my church or your church, the gospel of my pastor or your pastor. You see now, the church was growing, 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 growing because we were focusing on earthly and men made merchandise of other men and men became very great and became like principalities. And God brought COVID-19 and everybody was reduced to a voice. Not, you don't hear about all these great gatherings again. Everybody was reduced to a voice. God began to call different voices out and begin to bring men out. And the many voices just disappeared. Some of them will go and never come back. They won't die, but their voice has expired. God is raising voices, and your voice is one of those voices. I want you to make your voice count. Make your voice count. This is the era of souls. This is the era of souls. If you look at the book of um, Acts, the Bible said his bishopric, let another pay. Let another pay. There were people that lost their voice. And the uh, uh, other people took their position. Talking about Judas, he lost his voice. He was one of the bishops among the 12 of the disciples of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, but say his bishopric, let who another person take it. You cannot lose your voice. Oh, it's not your portion. If you have even erred, God will forgive you and bring you back into the fold in the name of you. But you have to recognize Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible said, we are going back to the preaching of the kingdom, gospel of the kingdom. And that is when it begins to make sense. And when you look at when, he, when they went to jail in the book of Acts chapter five, and they brought them out, the first thing the angel told them to do is go, verse 20, Acts Act chapter five, verse 20. He said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people, all the world, of this life. The life we are talking about is the life eternal, the life of the kingdom. It's a life that is celebrated, a life that is being observed from above, a life that comes from something that is coming from the higher altitude. You are not living on the earthly things. You are not living by your five senses. You are living by the kingdom, by the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God must be pure. It must be peaceable. It must have good fruit in it. It must not be partial. God is not a partial God. So he said, go speak the word of this life. Jesus said, I have come that you should have that life. The life we are talking about is the life that is lived from above. That you have life and have it in abundance. There's an abundance that depicts or follows the life that we have in Christ. It comes with joy. It comes with peace. It comes with calmness. It comes oh, with fulfillment. It comes with the wisdom and the knowledge of God. It comes with the fear of the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning, the beginning, the beginning of wisdom. And the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. In Psalm 24, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And in, in them, he makes his covenant or he reveals his covenant. The secret of the Lord. Psalm 25, I think verse 14. It's with them that fear him. And you are among those people that fear God. Oh, Karabasakataba. That God will reveal his, his, his thing. I want you to see something here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mukurubu Sakataba. La Bogu Sikete Bali Kanama Shakataba. Oh, Kanama Sikataba. Rabaga Shikotobo Li Kanama. Numbers chapter 23. It's, this is a vital place for us to consider. And it's one of the places that I took the, the word, the shout of the king is with them. Where, where the king, Balak, a terrible king, called the man of God, Balaam, to curse the children of Israel. 
if you read the whole story, I don't want to go back and forth with it, but maybe I will pick some things and, 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 and read there. And uh, he brought him to make a prayer. And you look at verse 13. Oh, Karabashi Kotobo, Makata Sakataba. He said, and Balak said to him, come, I pray thee with me on, on to another place. So they have tried it, raised seven altars. I don't know who have been raising altar against you or raising altar against your family, against your life, against who you are. That altar will not stand because the shout of the king is among you. Uh, the Bible says, and he took him to another place. If you read from verse one, it will make sense. But I'm just trying to paraphrase. Uh, and he said, uh, he said unto him, from whence they might I see them, and uh, thou shall see but the uttermost part of them, and thou shall see them all, and curse them. Curse me them from thence. He said, curse them. <laughs> And uh, Balaam, Balaam was hesitant. After they have sacrificed bulls and bullocks and rams on the altar, uh, Rakata Sikotobo, and in verse 15, the Bible says, and Balak stand here, told him, stand here by the burnt offering while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam, the prophet, and put in him, in his mouth, and said, go again unto Balak and say thus. Verse 17, and when he came unto Balak, uh, let's go down to verse um, 19. Now God began to speak. Say, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall not make it good? Verse 20, behold, I have received commandment to bless. I don't know who is trying to curse you because there is a shout of a king. I have received what? Commandment to bless. Do you know how much they paid this prophet? But every time he tried to curse the children of God, it was not possible. This is the era of power. We are talking about restoring the, the, the dignity of the sons of God. I have received commandment to bless and he had blessed and I cannot reverse it. Look at verse 21, where our reference was coming from. And he, he said, he had not beheld what? Iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is, the Lord his God is with him. So God has to be with you. Seek you first, Matthew 6, 33. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. The Lord, his God, that is Jesus Christ, is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. So all these things cannot be possible because there is someone with them. Is God with you today? Is the shout of the king among you? The Lord, his God, is with him. And the shout of the king is among them. The shout of the king is among you. I don't care what the devil has said or tried to say. He cannot. He cannot stop you. The shout of the king is among you. The shout of the king is among you. The shout of the king is among you. Once it is in your mix, nothing. The Bible said in verse 22, God brought them out of Egypt. He had as it were, the strength of an unicorn. These people have a strength of an unicorn. The strength of a unicorn is with you. The unicorn is like a horse that has a very big horn. That is that means is more powerful and more dangerous than a regular horse. Many of you are coming out of this COVID with the strength of a unicorn. In the name of Jesus Christ, not just in resources, but you are coming out with great knowledge and the great power of, of discernment and prophecy. Many of you are coming out as prophets. Some of you are coming as an apostle or you are going to be in the marketplace as an evangelist controlling the economy of nations by the authority and the power. For the Bible said, and the Korobus, let's go there, let's go there, let's go there, let's go there. Isaiah, oh, Makata, Sakataba, Isaiah chapter 2. I want you to see how we have to take over. You are taking over in this era. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass. This is the era in the last days. What are the last days? This is it. That the mountain of the lost house shall be established on the top of the mountains. 
and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Arise, shine that the light is come and nations shall come to you. The same thing God is saying. In verse 3, I say, many shall come. Many shall say, shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and he will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Laws will begin to come out from the church. The church that is not essential is beginning to be essential because the sons of God shall mount up the, the place of authority in nations, in the place of governance. They shall be there in the mountain of family, the children of God. He said, the law shall come out from me and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, Moko to Sakakaba, and he shall judge among the nations. We shall begin to have judgment. From nations, and shall rebuke many people, and shall beat the sword of the plowshare and the spear that the spring do. And nations shall not lift up sword against them. The era of the sons is the era of peace. It's happening. That's why, if you are living in America in this era, and you have the the, the ability to vote, like I said, your vote is your power. Go and vote. It doesn't matter who the Lord has directed you to vote, but I want you to exercise your authority. Vote. And you will see what God is going to do. The sons of God are coming out, and we are coming out. We are not just coming out anyhow. We are coming out strong and square. But I, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. We are going to pray because this is the era where God is going to make himself mighty. I want you to see Ephesians chapter 1. And Paul began to say, some things. Hakurobo sakataba, makataraba shikotobo, rebaga sikataba likanama shakataba. Are we there in Ephesians chapter one? Look at verse ten. Ah, in the name of you say that in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Remember when they asked Jesus Christ in Acts chapter one, verse seven. Is it the time now that you are going to bring back the kingdom of God? He say it is not for you to know the time, but you shall receive power in verse eight. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. But now he says something in verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 1 that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one thing in Christ, both which is in heaven and which is on earth, even in him. Christ is going to be made manifest. And now the world is beginning to hear about the name of Jesus Christ again. It's not about how many church or denominations or dogmas or doctrines. He's talking about the name of Jesus. It's coming back to become strong again. And the sons of God will begin to administer authority and justice in nations. Things will begin to happen, not because of anything, but because of the sons of God. Because it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lost house shall be up top of every mountain. I don't know what sphere of influence you are in. Are you in the family circle? God is going to put families together again. The Bible said your sons shall come from afar and your daughter shall nurse their children by your side. You are, they are coming back. We are going to have a family again. A family again whereby brethren can go from house to house ministering and sharing the word of God as it was in the days of the apostle, where power shall be exhibited. The house of God shall be a place of knowledge and wisdom, that the sons of God will be over government. government. They shall be over economy. They shall be over education. They shall be over art and culture. Rabogo Sakakaba. They shall be over every other sphere. They shall be over the, the sphere of media, technology, and security. The sons of God. It is the era we are in now, the era of coming over the mountain of religion. The seven mountains is going to be pure until that time Jesus is not coming. Before the Lord says unto my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And the Bible said here in Matthew, O Kanama Sakataba, Rabogo Shakataba, 24, as we pray, we have read it before. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the and come. The gospel shall be preached in all the world, all the world, all the nations, all the cities, all the clans, families, tribe, race. The kingdom shall be preached. Are you one of the people that are representing the kingdom in the marketplace? Are you in the place of authority in the governance? Are you in the place of education? Are you representing the kingdom there? Are you in the place of family? 
Are you representing the kingdom in religion? All the religious organizations, whatever they call themselves, you have to be the son of God, springing out there in art and culture, in the media, oh, Karabasiko, to art and culture. We're talking about Hollywood, movies, and all these entertainment places, musicians, great songs. The sons of God have to be over the mountain of art and culture. And above all, the mountain of media from this platform that I'm speaking to you, this is a media platform. Whether you are in the social aspect of it, or you are in the hardcore, or even in the lane of it, in the structural part of it, architectural part of media, in the technological aspect, in security, in the cloud, in the cyberspace, wherever you find yourself as a son of God, you have to carry the banner, the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says it is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The shout of the king is among you that they shall not find any kind of perverseness in you and you shall not be cursed. I release every power that the devil has sent against you to cause. Let it begin to break now in the name of Jesus. As we pray now, Makoto Sakataba, Lebaga Shikotobori Kanama Sakataba. We give you all glory and adoration. We exalt, we magnify you. We worship you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to come against authorities. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, the Bible says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You can put it, make it personal. There is no weapon that is formed against me that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up against me in judgment, I condemn. For this is the heritage of the servant of God. It is your heritage. And their righteousness is me, says the Lord. Say, God, it's my, right, it's my heritage to overcome powers and principalities. It is my heritage to overcome every weapon of the enemy. It is my heritage. I stand on the word of God in Isaiah 54, 17. He said, for this is the heritage of the servants of God. I stand on that word. Even in Isaiah 54, verse 14, the Bible says, in righteousness shall thou establish. O can my Lord, establish me in righteousness, for there shall be no perverseness in me. There shall be no sin among Jacob. Thou shalt be far from oppression. No man can oppress you. Thou shalt not fear. Ah, Karaba, you will not be afraid of the terror that move by day or the one that move by night. And from terrors, it shall not come near thee. Bakoto Sokotobo, Rabagashi Katabali Kanama. In the name of Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 10. If you look at verse 4, the Bible said, the, the, for the weapons of our warfare, ah, 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 they are not kinda, my, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. So let the weapons of our warfare begin to pull down every stronghold of the enemy in every part of my life, of my, of my family, in every part of my activities or the things that we do. For the weapons of my warfare, they are not kinda, they are strong through God to the pulling down. I pull down every stronghold of any character or everything in every uh, 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 what's it called um, expression of the enemy through my lifestyle. Let it come down in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at the verse five, he say casting down imaginations, every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And in me, I bring them into captivity and all my thoughts to the obedience of Christ. I, 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 I overwhelm and uh, take captives of my thoughts. My thoughts cannot be telepathically manipulated by the devil. Rabo goes, every junk that the enemy has put in my soul, I begin to flush them out and gather them to the obedience of Christ and cast them to the abyss. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Ephesians chapter six, look at verse 16. He say, above all, Take the shield wherein you shall be able to quench the fury daft of the wicked. I take the shield of faith. My faith is my faith is strong. The Bible said that if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be that move and cast to the sea. Let my faith be built like a shield wherein I'm able to quench every fury of the wicked, every daft of the wicked. In the name of Jesus Christ, in verse 17 of that Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, he said, I take the helmet of salvation, O Karama Mama, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I protect myself with the helmet of salvation and the sword of 
the spirit, which is the word. Let the word of God begin to proceed out of my mouth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And another prayer before we call it a day today Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made cause for us. It is written, cause is everyone that hanged upon the tree. I am redeemed from the cause of poverty. I want you to pray. It. I redeemed from the cause of sickness. I am redeemed from the cause of spiritual death. I am redeemed from the cause of attack and terror. I bind myself and my family with Jesus Christ. I bind my ministry with Jesus Christ. I bind my life with Christ. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. I have the hope of glory. The Bible says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As I bind myself with Christ, I am not cursed, for Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. First John chapter 4, I have overcome them because greater is in me than in him that is in the world. I am an overcomer. I want you to say that word. Say it to yourself. You are an overcomer. Makoto Sakataba, I am an overcomer. And the last but not the least, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. I want you to say to yourself, I am blessed with all, not some, spiritual blessings oh, in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings, the blessings of resources, the blessings of um, the gift of the spirit, knowledge, the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, the gift of faith. I am blessed with the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, the gift of discernment of spirits, working of miracle. I am blessed with the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering. I am blessed with all, not some of them, spiritual blessings, hallelujah, by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you are here today, and what we have said have made sense to you. What we talked about today is a shout of the king is among you. God, as the king, Jesus Christ, is in you. And greater is he, is he that is in you than he that is out there spreading themselves, gallivanting. So I want you to say, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, that he died and was resurrected for us, and confess him as our Lord and Savior, we shall be saved. I want you to say after me now, just in this one minute, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you died and resurrected for my sins, and I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. I love you with all my heart, but above all, Jesus loves you the more. I will see you on Sunday. Bye.